Without objection, so ordered. Thank you. As a new representative last term, I'll never forget the scene when we were all told that there was a free gift for legislators in the Speaker's Library. I, like all of my colleagues, went and picked up a little box, and it was pretty neat. It had a small cast iron frying pan. And I'll never forget what happened next. We all dutifully matched, marched back to session, presents in hands, weaving our way through a trail of people in wheelchairs who had been devastated, first in an automobile crash, then again when they lost the insurance coverage they had bought and paid for. The scene was surreal and deeply disturbing, so callous and uncaring, though none of us meant it that way. It just happened. I decided to begin stopping and listening to the stories of those who were devastated by the unintended consequences of an otherwise well-intentioned law. I met so many people around the state and decided that it was simply inhumane to allow David and his mother, for instance, to continue to suffer, to allow Chris and her daughter Brittany from my own district to have their entire lives put in jeopardy because they didn't get the care they were promised. To watch five-year-old Annabelle, who many of us know, paralyzed from the neck down, sit there and smile, and it's a beautiful smile, at the thrill of just being in the Capitol. The two sponsors of these bills came with me to take a picture with her, and I hope it hangs on her wall as an adult someday. But her mom, Brandy, told me that she's 15 minutes from death every single moment of her life. If her, if her ventilator fails, she has 15 minutes to live. These people had their coverage cut by 45% to just 55% of what was being charged on January 1st, 2019. Imagine anything in this world that cost 55% of what it did a year before COVID. The Michigan Supreme Court just ruled it was absolutely wrong that such cuts were applied retroactively. We've been saying that for years, but in the end, it almost doesn't matter. Because in the interim, many of the healthcare businesses and professionals these people relied upon have been forced to close up shop and move elsewhere. Even if we fix this today, some of the damage is permanent and cannot be undone. When auto no-fault reform was passed, almost everybody said it would need to be tweaked along the way. We tried to change it last term, but we were told that we needed to give it more time to see how the reforms would work. And now I'm not going to end another year or another session looking into the eyes of those lives who continue to be turned upside down with yet another excuse, yet another term gone by with no relief. In Scripture, Jesus says that whatever you do for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you do for me. If we can't come together to help these people, truly among the most desperate in our society, I'm not sure anything else we do really matters. We have it in our power to fix this for so many Michigan families. Let's not walk by them again in the hallways of the Capitol. Let's pass these bills and instead stop, look them in the eyes and say, we heard you and we took action. Thank you.